The Buzz with Jess Lujan. Hey, welcome back. I'm with Jason Williams here, the lead mechanical engineer for Sebastian. Of course, this is the underwater unmanned vehicle that's going to be around our neighborhood here, the Marianas Trench. Good afternoon. How are you doing? Not too bad. So nice Jason, to please you. tell us all about Sebastian. I, I, let me put my fingerprint on there. There we go. <laughs> tell us all about Sebastian. Sure. Well, it's a remotely operated vehicle. Mm -hmm. um, it's 4,500 meter depth rated. Which is about over two miles, right? Uh, yeah. yeah okay, something okay, like that. Okay. And it's not just Sebastian, but it is a whole system. We got a winch, docking head, control room, vehicle. So it's a whole package deal. So it's mm -hmm. not just a vehicle. Um, but the vehicle is a 45 horsepower hydraulically driven vehicle. Okay. It's got five thrusters. Um, this is the syntactic foam, so that's what kind of makes it float. Okay. Um, but it doesn't necessarily float. It does. It's neutrally buoyant once okay. it starts going down. Okay. So, okay. Um, that, that's so it allows, allows it to sink as well. Exactly. Okay. So okay. it allows us to fly around the water okay. as opposed okay. to you know thrusting down or mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. sinking to the bottom and okay. whatnot. So. Okay. Tell me a little bit about this instrumentation here. There's a lot of. I mean, everything is definitely electrical here, and yeah. you're playing the ultimate uh, video games actually in your, your your area there. But you know, when, when I was talking to some of your crew members here, they said this thing is full of. Uh, uh, I guess silicone oil is that, yes. what, is that yeah. what it is, and what does that do? I mean, you know, different atmospheres down in you know in, in the water there uh, has I mean a lot to do with pressure. Now, how does this react? Because in order to sustain life down there, you need to be in, in, a, in an atmosphere that allows you to 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 live, right? Yeah. Well, you need this to be alive as well. Exactly. <laughs> so tell us about this. Exactly. Yeah. Well, there's a number of boxes all the way around the vehicle. There's, mm -hmm. I think there's seven in total okay. that okay. are filled with wires and junction, junctions and terminal blocks and whatnot. Okay. And a lot of the electronics obviously don't like the water. Okay. So what we do is a little trick that's used throughout the industry is we mm -hmm. fill it with oil mm -hmm. and then we use something called a compensator, mm. which is a spring uh, bladder okay. that as you go under pressure, it balances the water pressure with the oil pressure inside of here. Oh, okay, so okay. these things aren't pressurized. Um, it doesn't have a big differential pressure from okay. the outside, so the water doesn't try and get in. So the mm. oil is actually at a higher pressure than higher the water pressure, itself. Okay. So it, it's not trying to fight and the water doesn't want to get in there. Okay. So and that's and basically the electronics works just fine with silicone oil in there. So it, it doesn't matter the different atmospheres that you, that you no, go down? Not okay. at all. Oh, okay. Yeah. Does it have to be the silicone oil? I mean... No, yeah, there's yeah, a lot yeah. of different... Uh, out oil types okay. that people use is silicone is just what our electric electronic oh. engineers okay. wanted to use. Now, now tell us because you have um, there's arms here. These are yep. the things that are. I mean, there's an unmanned vehicle. Yep. Okay, so basically this is going to be Sebastian's going to be operating. It's going to be the ultimate video game players basically yep. aboard the, the Fulker that are going to be grabbing things underwater. So tell us about these. Yeah, these arms here. <laughs> yeah, these are seven function manipulators. Okay, they got a reach of about seven feet, so it can stick right out here. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. There's a little master controller inside the control room mm -hmm. that the pilots use, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and basically it just follows the arm inside there, which okay. you'll probably go and have a look. Okay. Okay. Um, and it'll do exactly what the pilot's doing. So okay. we use the the multiple cameras that we have to give okay. us different angles, but we use different science instruments. We have scoops. Mm -hmm. Uh, suction samplers, mm -hmm. basically big vacuum cleaners to go and take samples for the scientists. Now, now tell us how, again, when you're, look, when you're looking at this and filled with oil and pressurized and all that, yeah. how does the camera unit work and the lighting? I mean, don't they, are they subjected to the atmospheric changes as well? Yeah, yeah. no, for yeah. sure. Yeah. And, and a lot of these are little one atmosphere housings, okay. so they okay. do have to resist that pressure. Okay, okay. Um, so yeah, so uh, the cameras and lights are all pressure uh, qualified and whatnot. Okay. So, so can you tell us again, I mean, you're, you're going to be in like total darkness down there, right? Yeah. No, I mean, when you see these lights, oh, these are little bitty lights. But what are these equivalent? I mean, you're going to be uh, operating total darkness using these hands and, yeah. and, and guys on, on board the, the Falker are going to be, again, taking things that, that, that their scientists are going to be taking things that, that, that they want to to, uh, to study. So how strong are these lights? I mean, they're illuminated, I right? think we we calculated uh, the other day that they, it equates to about 150 vehicle high beams. So if 150 you think of 150 vehicles, cars okay. Okay. have high beams on, that's basically what this will be underwater. Wow. Okay. There's 16 uh, of these smaller lights here, and then I think there are like 11,000 lumens, 11, okay. and then four of these big ones. So we have 20 big 
high intensity lights on okay. the front of this vehicle and kind of distributed around the vehicle. Okay. So and then plus two other strobe lights. Okay. So now it, it won't be dark down there for us. Now again, when you when you go down, it's not it's not gasoline. So when you run out of fuel or yeah. or when you run out of energy, when how long can it stay down? It can stay down pretty much indefinitely. Oh really? Yeah. There's oh. no real limit on it. It's basically powered by this umbilical uh, cable. Okay. So you have an umbilical. Yeah, yes. Yeah. From from the Fulker. Exactly. Oh, so okay. that winch system up there houses the umbilical. Okay. And it pays it out, and then we just kind of okay. fly by wire. Oh, okay. So it's called a live boat system. Yeah. So the umbilical goes down to the bottom, and then we have something called a catenary, which is what we use these lemon floats yeah, for, okay. which allow, gives gives the vehicle a leash. So okay. it's not just sitting there on a taut okay. wire. It's allowed to kind of move around and whatnot. Right. So, and this umbilical will, will send power. Right. There's five conductors and five fiber optic. Yeah fibers sure. in there okay. that power the telecommunications and uh, or the communications with the telemetry system okay. and it just powers the submotor okay. which is electric which drives the whole Fantastic. thing. Fantastic. Jason, well thank you very much. Appreciate thank you. you being on with us. All right. I'm here now with Mick Bingham. He's the lead electrical engineer aboard this project. So tell us about the communication. How do you get all this to communicate with Sebastian to get her done. <laughs> right, exactly. We got uh, just over five kilometers of cable between the ship and the vehicle. Okay. So the only way to reliably transmit communications over that length is through fiber optic cables. Okay. okay. So we got five fiber optic cables through our umbilical cable spooled up on this winch. Okay, right over here. Okay. Yeah, yep. right mm -hmm. over here. And they run all the way down through the docking head subseat of the vehicle. Mm -hmm. So through that, we got all of our vehicle telemetry data, its position, all of its sensors. We've got two 4K cameras, we've got four HD cameras, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and all of the controls for manipulators and things like that, so it can really put the operator mm -hmm, in mm -hmm. the picture yeah. five kilometers below the surface. Oh, okay. I mean, again, you know, we're going to encourage, of course, all the, the, the school students to be watching this. So as an electrical engineer, you, you went to school for this thing. <laughs> I went to school for this thing. This could be you. Yeah, yeah. And this could be you. Look how young he is, you know? I was saying, that, matter of fact, earlier I said, where did you go to school? Because I'm thinking, he's still going to school. <laughs> but anyway, so there, 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 there we go. And you can tell he's the best dressed here. See, look at, look at, look at the tie, right? Don't look leave at the tie. Him without so it. how exactly, again, does this work? All this, are, you, this is, again, the, your fiber optics cables, right? right. Again, that, that talks to the... To, to Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Okay. So it's an electric winch with our five kilometers of cable mm -hmm. spooled mm -hmm. on it, and mm -hmm. inside the umbilical cable, we've got five high voltage copper conductors that take all the power down for the vehicle. Okay. We use three of them for a big hydraulic pump for all the propulsion, and mm -hmm. two of them run all of the lights and the hotel systems on the vehicle. Okay. Okay. In the same cable, we've got a little tiny stainless steel tube with the fiber optics, and mm -hmm. that actually comes out in this orange cable here. So inside the box, the orange cable is the core of our umbilical cable. It's the umbilical okay. cable without the steel armor. Mm -hmm. So we come in here, you can see our high voltage terminations in the gray blocks here, and then mm -hmm. our fiber splices over here. So um, this is really the only connection between the top side and the vehicle. Um, Data-wise, it's very complex, but electrically and optically, it's very simple. So mm -hmm. that, that mm -hmm. leads us to the reliability. Now, let, let, let me ask again, uh, be remiss if I didn't ask this. You know, you anticipate certain things to happen down there and what may go wrong in the different atmospheres and all that. Right. How do you, how again do you, uh, uh, detect exactly where and what you need to fix as it's going down there and, and things happen. Right. <laughs> um, we run an extensive series of deck checks before uh -huh. we even pick the vehicle up okay. off the deck. So okay. we power up the HPU, we power up all of the electrical systems. It's like a pre-flight check for an okay. airplane. Okay. Okay. So the, the vehicle is up and running before we pop her in the water. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Once we lower in the water, we might see other faults, but to be honest, there's not a lot we can do to fix things on the vehicle. Okay. Top okay. side, we can change around a spare fibers, okay. things okay. like that, but on the vehicle, okay. if we have a problem subsea, she's coming back up. Okay. Now, now let, let me ask this, because the way things operate, of course, you're, you're communicating with Sebastian through fiber optics, okay? Now, when we're talking about uh, technology, when uh, and now this is maybe outside uh, of, of this project, but drones are not run through fiber optics. Right. Yeah. So, would it get to that point again where you're operating kind of like a drone situation? I mean, would that would that happen, or or is water very different from maybe flying in, in, in the air? Yeah, the water makes it really tough. So okay, we've got okay. a long history of radio frequency signals through the air that we okay. use for our drones, our Wi-Fi, sure, our sure, cell phones, okay, okay. fantastic. But 
water blocks almost all radio frequencies. Okay, okay. So um, it's possible to do it with very high powers over short ranges, okay, but okay. when we go five kilometers below the ocean, it's just not an okay, option Okay, so, so that, that's why you can't do the, the drone technology underwater, right? Exactly, yeah. we're okay. stuck with a fiber optic cable if we want real-time comms. There are some kind of drone vehicles, they're mostly autonomous, so they don't have communications yeah, to the okay. surface, they got all their smarts on board. And, and how did I know that? That's engineering 101, okay? <laughs> At least I learned that in my friend who was a electrician. <laughs> <laughs> <That's good. laughs> anyway, so we're aboard this. I mean, this is a high voltage. How much power does it take to, to run Sebastian and, and all that you do? And likewise, I mean, you guys must have your own power plant. Pretty much. So yeah, okay. the, the ship's main engines are basically our power plants. Okay. So when oh, okay. the ship is running its main engines and burning diesel, We've got a little alternator that sits on the back of that mm -hmm. engine and provides us a huge amount of power. How many megawatts of that? I mean, the, the, yeah. The, the, so the vehicle is about. Hang on, we're gonna have to do this again. The vehicle's 45 horse, which is about there. Yeah, okay. So the vehicle's got about 45 horsepower okay. for propulsion. So okay. we need about 30 kilowatts electrically okay. to run that, okay. Okay. and we have no problem getting that from our ship's generator. Um, we actually step up to a high voltage to transmit that through the umbilical cable. And that's yeah. the same reason we use high voltage power lines for transmission across the country. It reduces the losses in our cable. Yeah. So it's stepped up here in the van and we step it down again at the other end on the vehicle. Well, Nick, thank you very much. My thank pleasure, you very, Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Hey, we'll be right back.